What's up guys, Cass here from Giveaway Studios and on this one I'm going to show you guys how to turn these 70 pieces of foam that you see here into this fuzzy cursed cheese ball of a prop complete with removable magnetic handles, butt, tail, and even a chainsaw blade, but most importantly swappable eyes so we can change out his expressions to go from happy Pochita to angry Pochita. Let's get it. All right, so first off, we're gonna start with our body pieces. So we should have uh, eight of these, four, on each, uh, four for each side, left and right of the body. We're gonna heat and shape these, and then we're going to put them together with glue, and then we'll tackle the other five and two millimeter pieces afterwards as we go along. So let's start with these guys first. You're gonna to wanna to go from your flat piece to something curved like this. All right, so you wanna make sure that you curve all of your pieces, and now we're gonna go ahead and glue everything together. Okay, so with all of our parts heated, we're going to go ahead and add some contact cement to all of our edges. We're gonna do it um, pair by pair. So right now we're going to glue the top pieces, left and right, to the top pieces. Now, as long as you transferred your information, so the piece that becomes his back proper, um, the flatter edges go with each other and then the curved edges are kind of like off to the side. Okay. Uh, you're going to want to put some glue in your darts to make sure that that gets glued back properly. You can go ahead and probably just split this open a little bit. Just make sure not to tear it and then slide some glue in there so you can glue that back in. All right. You're going to want to glue these guys shut before you glue uh, the two parts together. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this process and I will catch you guys for the next step. All right, so just to give you guys a sense, after you put your glue in here, okay, you're going to want to close these guys up as flush as possible. That way it's less filling and fixing. And then you're going to glue your parts to each other. So these are the first two pieces. Right. This is the top of your character. You see your fronts here, all your lines line up, left and right. So now we're going to continue. So I have my right side. I'm going to glue it to the right side of my part. I'm going to start with the front. You can start with the front. You can start with the back. It doesn't really uh, matter all that much. Just make sure that your parts are aligned. I know that I uh, didn't do these properly, so I'm just going to skip these. Uh, so that's why they're probably not aligning with each other and I'm going to start with the next the next ones down which I know that are I transferred properly which is why it's important to actually transfer all of your lines as accurately as possible so that there is no confusion for you when you are putting this together Make sure that I press everything together so that they stick. And now we have one side. And then we can focus on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through those steps and catch you guys for the next one. Alright, so here we go. At this point, we're at the halfway point. We have the half of the top of Pochita made, and now we're going to focus on the bottom half, and then we're going to put everything together. Alright, so this is the absolute bottom of your Pochita, right? as opposed to the absolute top that we have over here, so this is basically the equivalent of this part for the top. Uh, all right, so now we're going to go ahead and add <clears throat> our other house. Okay, uh, front to front, back towards back. You know the drill. Let's get it. All 
All right, now that we have our two halves, we're gonna start gluing them together. So uh, I'm gonna take my time with this one so you guys can kind of like see the process. So I'm gonna start at the very front here. All right, stop. Before you guys go any further, future Cass here. And I was going to suggest that instead of assembling the two halves right now, skip over to the part where we assemble the legs and mount your legs to the bottom half while your two main body parts are still separate. That's going to make it so that you can actually fit your hands in and adhere the legs properly to your bottom half. Then you can come back and resume from here. If you don't do that, it's not that it's going to be impossible to assemble, but it definitely makes it a bit harder to go in and push your edges up against the body to get a good seal, specifically on your fourth and last leg, as you really won't have any other opening to fit your hand or fingers in for good pressure. But that aside, back to the tutorial. And I'm gonna to try to focus one side at a time. So I'm gonna focus on the uh, left side first. You can start with the right side, whichever works, and then really force the foam not only sit flush, but also register with its uh, registration marks, but at the same time keeping the other half from touching it. Okay. Forcing the foam to stay where we want it to stay. Move it around until we get to the booty. Right here. And then I'm going to stop right here at the back. Turn it around and start it back up at the front. It's more important that you get your front correct than your back because you can always hide any mistakes with the tail once we put that in. So that's why I'm placing more emphasis on getting uh, the front lined up than I am uh, the back. So again, getting real close here. Uh, if you find that your uh, pieces are sticking, you can always put like a piece of foam in between until you get to that point. Okay, so here. Slide my piece of foam over. Okay, let's have a good connection. Slide it back some more. At this point, everything is pretty much aligned. So if I can get rid of the foam and just kind of let the rest of the lines just kind of fall in place. All right. So so forth. And there we have it. At least the body of our pochita is ready. Okay? And then once we add our little uh, cheek pieces here, the face is gonna start making a little bit more sense. All right, so let's move on to the next step. So a quick trick to getting your eyes lined up, if you grab your pattern for the, uh, the bottom piece here that already has uh, the circle placement, uh, I've already done it for, for this side, but just to show you guys what it is that I did, I basically grabbed an X-Acto blade and I can do it on this one. I put it down on the line. I twisted to make a pretty big opening. Probably be like every half inch or so. Uh, you can go more if you'd like, but basically you're opening up the holes here so you can play, connect the dots. So uh, this already has the holes in it. So I'm just going to realign my pattern and then I'm going to use my marker and just kind of press into the holes that I just created to transfer those holes onto my foam piece itself. And then just make sure that they match the other one that I put down earlier. All right, and so that's gonna stay there as kind of a general guide of where it is that our eyeballs 
are going to end up on our little pochita. And, uh, you can grab your uh, chainsaw part piece that should already have the profile of the front of the face. And once you put it on there, you know, if you want the eyes to be further apart or closer apart to each other, that's going to be totally your call. Hence why this is a DIY kit. But yeah, just to show you guys how it is that I uh, align these uh, to each other. All right, so for the leg pieces, most of your putts are gonna be cut like this. So if this is your surface, the underside here has a bevel to it, all right? Which means that you're going to put your EVA foam down. So you're gonna cut your outer edges only at an angle, right? Just the part that's on the outside. And this is only gonna be for the thigh pieces. Everything else you don't even have to cut. Uh, at an angle, you just need to connect them uh, on their ends, all right? So we're gonna fast forward through these steps and then catch you guys for the next one. All right, guys, so once we have our leg pieces assembled, you notice that you have your thigh piece, your leg piece that's slightly larger, and then your foot piece that is the smallest of the three, right? I'm just gonna assemble these three pieces first and then I'll show you guys how to get this uh, set up properly. Let's get it. All right, so I'm gonna install our parts here. So I'm gonna start at my seam, okay? And again, just kind of focusing on one side at a time. I'm gonna try to align my parts as best as possible as I go around gluing my pieces. Okay. 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 Right, and just make sure that I press everything onto each other to make sure that I have a really good bond. All right, so here's the back leg, kind of looking doggish a little bit with like the curved elbow, all right? And then now for the foot, okay? So again, the seam's gonna start at the back here. Okay, align my registration marks. Take this one around, that ends right there. Take this one around, that ends right there. So you can see now he has like this little foot that's open and the only thing that's left here to do is to seal it off with this piece. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Okay, so for his little feet, we can do this either with two millimeter or uh, three millimeter or five millimeter foam. Uh, it depends at what scale you have it. I'm gonna do both uh, for you guys here, but fairly simple, grab your pattern, okay? Trace it onto your foam. Okay, and make sure that you have a nice sharp blade loaded onto your knife. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the front part here, uh, this being the surface, right? We're gonna cut inwards at an angle. So I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick my blade in, blade in at an angle. Just kind of rotate my part around my blade. Okay, and the back half here can be cut straight. All right, so if you're looking at a normal cut versus the angled cut that we, this is, you can clearly see this angle right here as opposed to just something that's flat on both ends. What this is going to allow us to do once we curve this, with a little bit of heat or without, it's a small enough piece that we can just kind of force the foam uh, to take a particular shape. Now we have like this little domed foot, which is gonna give them some nice fluffy paws as opposed to flat, uh, flat feet, okay? So uh, once we go ahead and glue this on there, don't worry about if you get 
a little bit of excess on the outside. Um, it's going to be super easy to just kind of Dremel this down um, and smooth it out. But if you don't have a Dremel, you can always just kind of trim this back until you get it to sit flush. And then you can do like some light sanding or something like that. But that's basically what this looks like for the five mil. Obviously, if you have a larger prop, um, it's not gonna be as difficult to put this in here because you'll have a lot more room to play with. But in my case, I'm going to use the two millimeter foam that I have here. I'm still gonna cut at that same angle. All right, so in the two mil, you can still see it barely there, but it does help uh, to have it sit a little bit more flush with my part when I'm going to assemble. So as I slide this into place, all right, you'll notice that I have the same look, just with a softer piece of foam that's easier for me to maneuver on such a small piece. All right? But that's pretty much it. We're going to glue this to the top of the foot here. Uh, and then uh, if you want to add some detail, you can always uh, do some score lines, but we'll go into all of that stuff a little later. But that's basically how um, one leg gets assembled. The process is the same for all the other ones. So this is the front leg. You have front thigh, front leg, front foot, and the process will be similar to what I just did with this one. So I'm gonna fast forward through these guys and catch you guys for the next step. All right, so we have all four of our legs. We have our back legs and we have our front legs. And a uh, mistake that I made, you'll notice that when I put this here, okay, it's barely making contact with the edge here. There's not enough uh, surface area um, to make contact with. So. What I've done is I've cut a couple of thin strips that I'm just going to glue to the inside of here to give me a little bit more uh, so that I can actually glue these on. So I'm going to fast forward through these steps and catch you guys for the next one. All right, so I fixed my gaff and now when I put my parts, you can see it fits nicely and I have enough material on the underside that I can actually glue to, okay? Then you're just gonna glue your piece. So for you guys, you're gonna kind of glue from the outside around. So I'm going to fast forward through this process. It's just a matter of putting uh, the glue, contact cement on both ends and gluing your parts in piece as smoothly as possible. Now I'm gonna start with the front here, uh, which is Probably a good idea for you guys as well. It's going to be fairly easy to do the first three. Um, the last one is going to be difficult because there won't be a hole for you to stick your hand in. Uh, here I can kind of go in and really press and make things flush. So use that to your advantage uh, as much as possible. And as you guys can see, we have a nice almost seamless transition here. I'm going to end up putting uh, some caulking on here to really smooth everything out uh, before we do any type of painting or anything. So that's how you put a leg on. And uh, that's basically going to be the same steps for the other uh, three. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through these steps and catch you guys for the next one. And there we go. We have all four legs accounted for. And all right, let's move on to the next step, which is going to be our little tail. All right, so if you haven't done so yet for your uh, tail parts, which are these four guys that you see down here, right? This is how we're going to assemble these. This being your surface, make sure that the back side here has a nice bevel on it. You might have to end up in going back in, maybe with a Dremel and sandpaper and sanding it at a much higher angle. You can only do so much while you're cutting, um, but 
that's going to, similarly to what we did with the uh, legs, it's going to help it sit a little bit more flush on the back end of our prop here. All right, so pretty easy. Follow your registration lines. We're going to glue these together. We're going to heat and shape them, and then I'll catch you guys for the next step. All right, so we're at the halfway point here. Okay, so I'm going to complete the rest with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and start attaching this part as smoothly as possible. This is such a short piece, I don't even think I have registration marks on the, uh, on the patterns themselves. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to go from one end to the other. Now, when we connect these two, the very tip here is going to look pretty janky. And that's perfectly okay because we're going to snip that in order to insert uh, the rest of our tail. So I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to glue the seat sides as smoothly as possible getting it as close as possible to the very top all right and this is what i mean by janky like it's pretty janky but don't worry about it we're gonna snip that tip in a little bit all right and we're just going to you know, keep shaping our part make sure that everything looks the way that it should and now we have a little butt, a little butt tail. Okay, and if we take this out, bring it over, you'll notice that it fits nicely on our little pochita. All right, and this is what we got so far. All right, All right. so to complete our tail, we're gonna grab this piece here. Now, if you uh, got the DIY kit, I'll send you a, a EVA foam tube That'll make this a lot easier, but for anyone downloading your patterns, um, you don't have a tube, unless you want to buy your own tube. Uh, but, you know, if that's not something you want to do, and you just want to make it yourself, uh, use this rectangular piece that comes in your pattern that will be labeled as tail. And what we're going to do is we're going to slice the edge at an angle, okay? And then flip it and slice the other side at the same angle, but on the other side. So, uh, and what that's going to happen is we'll be able to do what's called a scarf joint uh, that gives us more surface area for our foam. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat this, turn it into a little tube, and then we're going to glue these angled edges together, uh, trying to make it as seamless as possible. All right, let's get it. As you can see, as I was gluing this, I was curving it to kind of give me this kind of macaroni look that you see here. Uh, but eventually it's just gonna give you a slight little curve and that's the whole point. We're gonna superimpose it over your tail and where the width of your tube and your tail match, we're going to put a line and that's going to be where you're going to cut it. That way the surface of your cut matches the inner diameter of your tube and then you can glue these two guys together. Um, I'm going to do mine with the EVA foam tube so my measurement is going to be slightly different. Just and now this surface matches this surface and I can glue the two to each other. Right. Uh, like I said, I'm going to use this instead. Uh, reason being is I'm going to put a um, hanger wire through this. That way this can be posable if I ever want to put it uh, in a different position for whatever reason. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go through these steps and catch you guys for the next one. As you can see, I have my little tail. Uh, I put the metal rod. You can do this with a, uh, I have some 16 gauge metal here, but you can do this with like a um, metal hanger from your closet. I put some hot glue on there to make sure that the hanger doesn't slosh around. Let me see if I can 
put this at a different angle that you guys can possibly see it. Yep, there it is. There it is right there. It's a little shiny. And then the uh, tail itself now is rotatable, so I can do like different things to it uh, if I felt the need to. So we can actually go ahead and glue our tail. And where that is going to occur is right on the back of our piece here, right there where it meets this kind of like 45 angle looking thing, that's where you stop the tail and that's where the tail gets installed, all right? And the seams line up with each other. So this seam touches that middle seam of the back and so does the bottom seam here. Mark that on your pochita body right now. Meanwhile, all right, so for the eyes, I'm going to use my uh, circle cutter. So all I'm going to do with this is just place it down, and then I'm just going to start slowly bringing this down, and it's going to start cutting the foam. There we go. We have our circle. So I'm going to do that for both pieces, and then catch you guys for the next time. whites of our eyes cut out, we're going to use our pattern to situate the pupils, so we're going to superimpose this over our white part, and grab a pencil, something light, just make sure that it's absolutely uh, centered, and just kind of trace where it is that that needs to go, that way the eyeballs are as symmetrical to each other as they possibly can be, and then just check both of them, make sure that you're close enough, and grab your glue, and stick your pupils to your eyeballs. And also don't forget to carve yourself two little vampire teeth out of like five or three millimeter foam so you can put at the end, when everything is all said and done, this will be the last thing that we put on. All right, so now for these guys, uh, these little, uh, Facicles, if you, if you want to call them that, his little cheeks, his little uh, jowls. Uh, we're going to cut the edges at an angle. Uh, just the outer edges, the uh, the middle uh, darts. You guys can cut straight. So we're going to get reassembled before uh, gluing it to the face. Our surface should look nice and flat, but our backside should have our beveled edges on the sides here. So we're going to heat this, uh, glue all of our darts, and then we're going to attach it to the face. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through the step for these and catch you guys for the next one. from our heated piece here to our domed piece, right? And then you'll be able to sand and clean this up and put it there as his cheeks, okay? So on to the next one, and then we're going to go ahead and place it on our prop. All right, and once we're done with our two little uh, face balls, we're going to glue them together. And as an option, so I will have this pattern in here as well. It's only rounded at the bottom and not rounded at the top, whereas this one is rounded to top and bottom. I really don't want to glue this until I've done the chainsaw part. You can go ahead and do so if you'd like, but we will tackle this uh, in a little bit. Okay, so we're going to assemble our uh, chainsaw. Uh, you will be cutting these guys out of two millimeter foam. Uh, these guys can be either two or five millimeter foam or three millimeter foam, depending on um, what you feel is 
more appropriate. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these. Now in my case, I do have a laser cutter, so I was just able to cut one long strip uh, that I'm going to install on my uh, two five millimeter halves here. And what I'm going to do on my part is I'm going to have a flat piece of wood uh, that's going to be wedged in between here. And that's going to help me position this uh, so that it has something to slide into the head and I'll probably end up doing a couple of magnets uh, one at the top one at the bottom as well I'll fast forward through these steps and then catch you guys for the next one All right, so we have our chainsaw parts cut up. So what I'm going to do is just Grab one of them. We're gonna glue them to each other in a little bit, but I'm gonna grab one of them and I'm going to place it in the middle of my pochita. Just gonna place my finger here uh, where it ends and I'm going to make a mark. All right, and so we have our little chainsaw installed on our little pochita. And now I can really go in and figure out exactly where I want this uh, lip of his to be. I'm going to go ahead and mark where this needs to be. Never be afraid to take multiple measurements. Never be afraid to go back and readjust um, to make sure that things are exactly the way you want it to be. So in my case, now I know exactly where this is supposed to go. I can go ahead and put some glue down to actually uh, position this piece finally. All right, so I'm going to fast forward through those steps and I'll catch you guys for the next one. So we have our little chainsaw put in, we have our face tickles in. Now, you'll notice that this is very floppy because I only have the one stick uh, in the middle. Uh, reason why I only put one uh, is because I do intend on putting magnets in here uh, to magnetize this. But if you are not familiar with or don't know how to put magnets on your props, you can just use two uh, sticks instead and that's going to stabilize this. Um, when you uh, take it on and off of your prop. And as you can see, I had put uh, some markings here. That way, uh, without the stick, I was able to place it on the surface of the prop itself and mark where it is that the length of my stick should be. So that's that. And now I'm going to go ahead and place some magnets in there to get the position of where they need to be so that I can uh, glue this more permanently. All right, so for the magnets, basically what I did was use my Dremel and I picked two spots in my um, saw where I just kind of Dremeled in the two holes and I went deep enough that my five by 10 millimeter neodymium magnets can sink right in uh, into place be attached. I'm actually going to go slightly deeper. Just to make sure that I can sink these guys all the way inside. I don't want them to be flush. I want them to be a little more inside the saw than out. So I'm going to grab my Gorilla glue. I'm gonna put some on the sides of my magnet and on the inside. And when I slide this into place, I'm gonna go as fast as possible because the glue will stick immediately to the EVA foam. Okay, once I have it in position, I'm just kind of slide it out and let this cure. All right, we're gonna do the same thing for this side here. And now what I'm going to do is grab two more magnets, basically just letting them snap into place. 
then I'm going to use that to see where it lines up on my prop. And I'm basically going to press onto the prop to try and make an impression of where my magnets ended up, right here and right here. And then I'm going to use that as the position for me to dremel two more holes so I can slide the opposite magnets in. Alright, and with our two magnets in position, I'm going to go ahead and... And there we go. Pretty straight. Alright, not bad at all. Alright. Oh, we're a little top heavy now. Oh, look at that. But that's funny that he just kind of tips forward. All right, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and put the butt in, finally. Uh, now that we don't need to sit him back as much. Meanwhile. guys can see pretty straightforward process as far as putting the teeth on I'm just putting a little bit of super glue at the bottom of my spikes and putting the spikes in uh, the spikes face towards him so I put the big ones skip one big one so every other I put a big one and now I'm going to go back in and put my small little spikes all right so once we're done with our danger popsicle as you can see, I can slide it into place and it snaps magnetically. Of course, you don't have to do magnets if you don't want to. Uh, I tend to travel a lot with my props, so I always find a way to make them, uh, you know, uh, deconstruct, collapsible, uh, modular. Modular is the word I'm looking for. All right, so now we're going to go into our handles. So. Uh, you'll have your two handle parts and your two butt handle parts. And uh, these are two pieces of 10 millimeter UVA foam. So we're gonna glue these guys together. Once I've assembled these, I'm probably gonna go ahead and sand down the edges to round it off a little bit. Uh, but if you wanna leave it you know, flat and angled, that's completely up to you. Uh, also, we're going to cut out the little uh, tail bit here. Okay, and I have my little tail here. Now, if you don't have any type of hole punch to make these holes previously, you can just cut straight at an angle and then use your Dremel to kind of sand in uh, a curve inside of your piece. If anything, I'm gonna end up cleaning up the uh, inside of this as well. All right, so let's get into it. I'm gonna glue these parts, I'm gonna sand the edges, and then I'm gonna show you guys where to put them position-wise. finish sandwiching them together but you can tell that they're slightly off from each other so I'm gonna go ahead and sand everything down smooth uh, so that both halves are on the same level I'm also going to bevel the edges a little bit here and soften them up so it's more of a curvy handle than it is just flat edges so let's get fast forward through that and go through the next steps All right, so if you're looking at the tail, you can see I've kind of softened up the edge here, right? Compared to the other side, where it's pretty sharp. On the other side, on this side, it's soft. So that's basically what I'm doing with the Dremel. I have a stone, stone bit going on the sides, and I'm going to do the same thing for the handle, the big handle and the small handle, all right? All right. And here are all of my pieces, as you can see, nice and beveled, smoothed out on all of these. So because I just sanded these guys, I'm going to go ahead and heat seal all of them real quick. All right, and I have all my pieces, and like I mentioned earlier, I did the magnets on the body similar to what I did for the chainsaw on the front. So. And then my little triangle for my tail. Again, magnet right here. Danger popsicle. 
which is going to slide right in and lock into place. All right, and we have our chubby boy with his face tickles. All right, so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and go back into the sanding room and sand down all of my seams, basically. Right, so I'm going to fast forward through that step real quick, but uh, catch you guys for applying the caulking to this to smooth everything out. All right, so now we're going to do some smoothing out on our part. So I have what's called the quick seal here, and I'm going to put a little bit on the low spots of my, oh, there goes my clip. The low spots of my prop, and I'm just gonna grab a piece of foam and spread that out uh, nice and even. And I'm gonna grab some water, and I'm gonna use my fingers to just kind of like smooth out my application a little bit. And that way it's less streaky, and you just wanna to wanna to fade in your quick seal into the side of the foam with your finger. And I'm going to do this for all of the areas that I feel uh, need it the most. So uh, I'm going to turn it over on this side for you guys to see. And I'm going to go ahead and apply some of that on here. that I get it into the deep grooves of my seams. Our funky little watermelon ends up looking something like this. All of the seams covered, all of the big parts have enough of the quick seal to make a smooth transition. And now we're just gonna let this dry before we plastic dip it and see if we need to do any corrections after the plastic dip has cured. Okay, so while our main prop is drying, I'm gonna move on to the popsicle of doom here. Uh, as you guys can see, I've masked off the uh, chainsaw links uh, because I do want to keep them black. So I'm going to keep the same Plasti Dip black that I have on there. And I'll probably go over it with a little bit of silver highlight to make it look metallic. So we're going to fast forward through these steps and catch you guys for the next one. All right. And here's our Popsicle of Doom all painted up. Uh, I just hit it with a little bit of flat antique nickel from Rust-Oleum. Links will be in the description if you want to use the exact same paints and products that I do in this tutorial. So I'm just going to reveal our chainsaw. Nice. And now I'm just going to fix a lot of these uh, silver bleeds here with just a little bit of black paint. And then I'm going to go over this with uh, some dry brushing to give it like a gun metal uh, instead of just like a flat uh, matte black. All right, let's get it. Uh, I have some silver here. I'm gonna do some dry brushing on the black parts here to give it more of a metallic look. And then I'm gonna grab some of these uh, liquid chrome uh, mirror effect paint markers to do uh, the, like the bolts of the chainsaw links and probably do a little highlighting on the blades themselves as well. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through that process and catch you guys for the next step. We're basically going to go from just this black, flat black here, to something more like this. Here you have like some metallic highlights on it. I've painted the little nodules with the really uh, reflective chrome, so it makes it look like actual bolts are going through these. So, so, forth. so yeah, that's basically it. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the other side. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, and now that our pochita is out of the paint booth, now you can tell that there's a lot of areas. For example, here, the uh, face tickles 
that were nice and smooth. There's like a very nice transition there. It doesn't need to be cleaned up any more than that, really. But there are some areas, like here, these seams, that I'm going to have to go around two on. So that's what I mean by this process can take a little bit. Um, you won't get it right the first try. Um, and I love to go uh, put Plasti Dip on after my first pass just to be able to really get a sense of where it is that I need to go uh, round two or and or round three. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Catch you guys for the next step. All right. And this is what our little watermelon looks like for round two. Obviously a lot less because we've covered a lot of it and a lot of it was efficient. So now it's just really getting rid of those low spots and filling it a little bit more and smoothing out some more of the seams. And as you can see, I am wearing gloves for this. You don't have to, but I find that when I'm smoothing it out with my finger, uh, the fact that I have gloves on, it doesn't leave the lines of my fingerprints on the prop, which can be problematic. Uh, especially if you're not going to be doing the finish that I'm doing with the flocking. And if you're painting, that's something that might show up. So um, I mean, it's, it's a good way to keep the process clean also. All right. All right. Uh, now it's time for some more painting. All right. So a little bit of extracurricular here. I've put some tape underneath the uh, face stickles and I've drawn his little smiley face along with the outline of where the face meets the... Uh, Face tickles. I really have no other name for these things. And so I'm going to leave it on and cut it out. So what I'm going to do is basically push the part that I cut out in. So go ahead and grab a sharp blade for this. I'm just cutting from the corner of the mouth down. So as straight as possible. Following my line of the tape. I will include this open mouth shape in the patterns. Uh, this is something I decided to kind of do last minute as I was finishing up the prop as I realized his face had no other expression besides his eyes really. All right, so I'm gonna stop that right there. All right, and now that I have that, what I'm going to do is push this in a little bit to kind of make an opening for his mouth. And then I'll end up adding like a little tongue there or something like that to give it a little bit more uh, expression. But that's basically uh, what I'm doing for this piece here, all right? All right, so at this point, you can basically start painting your pochita uh, and then sticking all of this stuff onto it. But as usual, I like complicating things for myself. And I'm going to do what's called flocking, so it could have like a soft, kind of like teddy bear texture uh, to it. And I left the mouth cover because I don't want that to be fuzzy. I'm going to be painting that red. All right, so flocking uh, process is fairly simple. I have about 10 to 15 minutes to get this done. So I'm going to try to work as fast as possible. But basically, you take the adhesive paint, you paint your prop, and then you're going to dump a bunch of these fibers into this little uh, mini flopper. So you're going to shoot out fibers at your at your prop. Uh, you do want to wear a respirator when working with this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and seal myself up. So sorry if you guys can't hear me. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this up. All right. I'm going to grab my brush, I'm going to start painting, and as soon as I'm done painting the entirety of the piece, I'm going to start flocking it as fast as possible. I'm doing it in a giant bin, that way I can collect a lot of the flocking. Once everything is done, I can put it right back in the bag, though. The cool thing about this is that you can always recycle whatever didn't get used. So, uh, yeah, let's just uh, jump into it, and uh, hopefully this works out. And so really cool thing about the uh, the flocking uh, is that it is really flat. like you can bend and twist like this stuff does not come off. It is super strong. Um, it doesn't crack, which is amazing. It's great for EVA foam. And even if you try to scratch it off like this is my key. I'm actually putting a ton of pressure on this right now. I am not 
getting this off. So it's it's a really amazing finish, and I cannot say enough good things about it. Um, this is not sponsored or anything, but the, uh, the people uh, from Flocket really do an amazing job with their products, and I would recommend this finish for uh, any cosplay, really. One downside to it, uh, though, is that the working time is very short. It's about eight minutes. Um, it says 10 to 15, but I found that it really doesn't give you that much time uh, to work with it. So the smaller things you make, the better uh, it'll be. Like making a large thing uh, like the pochita uh, that I'm making right now uh, is, is a bit challenging. You really have to work super fast, but uh, yeah, really good stuff. All right, so it has been 10 hours since I last saw this guy. So he should be good to at least manipulate at this point. Uh, this stuff really doesn't cure until about 72 hours or so. Uh, so the longer you can leave it out without touching it, the better. But at least within the 10 to 15 hour mark, you can grab a brush and start getting rid of all of the excess fibers on it. So. All right, and our little guy is nice and fuzzy, as you can see. The texture on them is really soft, like really, really soft. This doesn't translate on camera how cool this actually is. Uh, and you can see not too many fibers came off, like this will be a quick cleanup on the table. Uh, but overall, not too bad of a success. There are some spots underneath that are a little patchy that I wish I would have done a little better with. Um, there's like this area here where I had like a bristle of the brush just kind of like catch and then I ended up pulling it off and ended up messing it up a little bit. But like small little things here and there that really aren't that bad from afar but from up close and me personally they kind of bother me. But yeah, this is our dude. Alright, so now let's move on to the next step and start adding the eyes and the rest of our parts. And now we assemble Cursed Pochita. Just kidding. He does look cursed though. So let's find our magnets. Stomp. Ooh, look at that. And you know what? Because these magnets feel so good, I think I'm going to also make the eyes magnetic as well. That's why I, that way I can switch them out and maybe do a brow and put some flocking on it as well, and I can make him angry or I can make him happy. Yeah, some more extracurricular stuff in me complicating my life, but obviously that's not a step you guys have to take if you feel like you are done with your prop. All right. Okay, yep, I'm not mad at it. Yeah, I'm not mad at it at all. It looks even more cursed now. All right, let's get it. Right. Now that we have our little mouth painted, we can start adding all of our parts, so it highlights on the actual handle. And there we go. Fancy Cheetos purse. Alright, so I put a little hole in here. Uh, so before putting my uh, little tongue, I'm going to put a magnet behind that because why not? I'm going to have a magnetically removable tongue so he can have uh, more animation to himself. Okay. So now not only does he have the little happy expression at all times, but now if I want to, I'll be able to add in the little tongue and it fits nicely because they are made from the same pattern. Move on to the next step, which is going to be adding the little tifuses. Finally, I'm just going to make sure that I give this a slight angle before I glue this on. It's going to be slightly beveled this way, so something like that. Yep, there we go. All right, and. Each of these guys basically gets glued where the mouth meets the uh, face nipples over here. And, 
And there you have it, guys. We are done. So here's our giant cheese ball. All right. With uh, a slight cursed pochita look in, in the middle. And I can have him be a little angry. But plug. And I also made a, an extra little tongue for him. So uh, here, let me... So in cute mode, I'm gonna go ahead and grab his little tongue and slide it on there. So I have cute Pochita with his little tongue out. So a lot of this stuff is just extra. Obviously, being able to change his expressions was uh, important for me. So I ended up, and you'll have this pattern in your uh, PDF as well. I ended up making a little brow shape. I made two sets of eyes and then I just glued this to the front of the eyes just kind of making it a lid and now i'm able to swap it out and give them different types of expressions and if i wanted to make more of these i can definitely uh, make even more of them i can give them like a little sad crying one or something like that with like a uh, blue tears coming down whatever the case may be all right so this has been cast from giveaway studios i hope this one was useful i hope you guys learned something this flocking technique is definitely really, really cool. It feels really soft. I wish you guys could feel what I feel on this little giant cheese ball. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. So uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.